filming. Question five. Um, the diagram shows two congruent identical triangles B, C, D, and B, A, E, where A, B, C is a straight line. Right, we've given some bits of information. Points E and D are joined by an arc. Find the angle B, C, D. Right, well, hang on. This is firstly asking us to find the angle B, C, D. There it is. Let's, let's just call it angle C, shall we? And, uh, well, I think for this first bit, all we're going to do is we're going to look at this triangle here, aren't we? And in this triangle, we need to find that angle. We know the opposite side. We've got that angle. We know the opposite side. What is, what is it that is all about sides and opposite angles and all that kind of thing? Sign rule. Sign rule. So we're going to use the sign rule. And if we want to know the angle, we put the sign bit on the top. So for part one, we're going to say that sine C over 8 is sine 65 over 11. And if we rearrange that, sine C is 8 sine 65 over 11 gives us some value for sine C. Should have got plus over 3. I'll wait. Trust Harry. Not 0.65, uh, 66. Um, it, uh, give me a bit to give it to more decimal places than that. Not 0.65. Not 0 0.659. One. Okay. Three. What we're going to do is we're going to be careful and we're going to keep that figure on the calculator screen and do inverse sine of that answer. And that's going to give us 41.23. And so we normally give our angles correct to three significant figures, so C is 41.2 degrees to three significant figures. Just a quick check, does that look like it's reasonable? Yeah. It does, doesn't it? It looks like that might, might well fit. Um, I don't know, maybe we're going to need that answer a little bit later. And that answer is, is something that we've got as a rounded decimal. Now on your calculator, if yours is one that's able to do this. It might make sense to store that in memory. So Harry has 41.23377 on his calculator. So he's going to press Shift RCL, and then he's going to choose one of the pink letters. Now I've called this C, so I'm going to put it in memory C, which is above the height button. And that has stored that answer in memory C. Now if I want to use that answer again, all I do is press Alpha C and I get that same figure on my calculator screen. And I can use it in calculations, and that's where we're doing. Okay. Some close-up calculator work there. Part two. All right, well, where are we up to now? We've got that angle. Part two says find, uh, show that the angle E, B, D. So now we're on this angle here. How do you know E, B, D? It's the angle that it's said it's E, it's the angle that goes from E to B to D. So it's the angle that is made by that shape. Why don't you just angle B? Because angle B could be that one there, which is 65. Okay. Yeah, but that's angle D, B, C. Okay, angle. Show that angle E, B, D is 0.873. Radians correct to three significant figures. Well, this is just going to be about converting degrees to radians. To start with, I, I think we can work it out in degrees, can't we? If that's 65, and we've been told that these are two congruent triangles, then I think we've been told that that is 65 degrees as well. And if those two are 65 degrees, they add up to 130. So that angle there must be 50 degrees. Is that okay to start with? Because this is a straight line. So angle EBD is 50 degrees. So 
So now we need to convert that into radians. Now we know that 180 degrees equals pi radians. So 1 degree equals pi over 180 radians if we divide both sides by 180. So 50 degrees equals 50 times that 1 degree. So the angle in radians is 50 times pi divided by 180. I've already calculated, Harry, I hope that's all right. And it wanted it to three significant figures. And it said, show that it's that. Well, that is equal to 0.873. It is radians three significant figures. I might need that later. I'm just going to store it. There it is. Okay. Part three. Part three. Part three. Part three. Of A, uh, two part B. Hence find the area of the shaded segment bounded by the chord ED and the arc ED, giving your answer correct to the figures. All right, well this is, if we find the area of this sector, and if we find the area of the triangle and subtract them, then the difference is the shaded area. So for that last part, what we want to do is the shaded area is the, the sector minus the triangle. And the sector is a half r squared theta. A half, have we got that value? Yep, the radius there is 8. So it's a half times 8 squared times theta, which is this angle that was up here, which was 0.873, or 5 pi over 18. Yeah? You could use the degrees. Well, now hang on. When you're finding the area of the sector, you have to use the radians. Okay, For half r squared theta, you have to use the radians. The triangle, as long as your calculator's in the right mode, you could use either one. What's that before the pi? Five. And the triangle is a half r squared Where sine. Where did you get that bit theta. from, that first bit? Okay. That bit? Yeah. Okay, that's the area of a sector, what we, what we wrote a moment ago, is a half r squared theta. Um, so long as theta is measured in radians. So that's a half and an eight is the radius there, and the theta is the angle. Okay. All right, now, so long as the calculator, the way I'm doing it here, I'm using radians in both my calculations. The calculator needs to be in radians. This should just give us an answer, a half times eight squared. Times five pi over 18. Um, should I be doing it in a Correct. It's a half times eight squared times what? Sign and five pi over eighteen. Correct, no, it does work. And I get. Is anybody else working this out, or is this all down to me? Just you. <laughs> Just me. I ain't got a calculator. Three point four one um, centimeters squared to three significant figures is the answer that I get. Might be right. Okay. Good.